So we've been spending some time sketching quadratic functions when we can use shifts. So for instance, y equals x minus 1 quantity squared plus 3. This x squared part in here tells us that it's quadratic function, shapes of parabola. The minus 1 tells us it's right 1. The plus 3 tells us it's up 3, which is great if it comes to us in that nice, tidy form. This is called the standard form. If, however, it's all multiplied out, then I'm not really sure where my parabola lives. I don't know where it's been shifted. So let's get a little vocabulary here. So the general form of a quadratic function, f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. That should look familiar. And in standard form, here are some new letters. f of x equals a times the quantity x minus h squared plus k. I know it's a lot of letters. Try not to freak out. This a here is the same as the a that we had over here. But the h and k are the letters that correspond to the vertex of the parabola. So let's think about it here with that example I just gave you. We moved that parabola right 1 and then up 3. So the vertex for that parabola, without even sketching it, I know to be positive 1 in the x direction positive 3 in the y direction. So let's compare that to this standard form of the parabola. So y equals x minus 1 squared plus 3, and then I'll write f of x equals a times x minus h squared plus k below it. You'll notice in my formula I have h and a minus sign in front of it. So if I'm just reading off h, the value of h, I have to ignore the minus sign and just take the 1. So h is equal to 1. For k, it doesn't have that. I just take the k as it is. Now, what if you are given, and you will be, a quadratic function that isn't in standard form? So let's grab a new one. g of x equals x squared minus 6x plus 2 and I ask you to find the vertex. Well, you cannot see it just by looking at this function the way it's written now in the general form. We need to get it to the standard form, and we do that by, wait for it, completing the square. That's really the only reason that that solution method is presented in your quadratic equation section to get you able to do it here. So let's remember how we do that. We need to have the leading coefficient equal to 1, which I started with so that I could be nice. And then we take the two terms that have x's in it and we kind of group them together. Now parentheses are not a good grouping symbol because they can cause us trouble because they mean certain things in math. So instead I'm going to use this box around the bottom and I'm going to move that 2 off to the side. It's going to wait. And now I have to figure out what the constant term is that goes inside that box so that I can factor into some binomial squared. So we take the linear coefficient, 6, take half of it, and square that number. So 6 over 2 is 3, 3 squared is 9. So I'm going to add 9 inside. Now when we did it with equations, what we do is then add 9 to the other side to balance. I'm going to balance differently this time. I'm going to balance by subtracting 9 just over there on the right-hand side. Same side. So if you would combine those, you'd get a net result of adding 0, which doesn't change it, but don't combine it because that undoes what we just did. So instead, let's go ahead and factor everything that was in the box. x minus 3 quantity squared. Let's subtract the pieces that are outside the box. Minus 7, and then we'll just get our notation down, g of x equals. Now if we compare this to the standard form, we see that h is equal to the number 3, k is equal to the number 7. We've taken our parabola and we've shifted it right 3 spaces and down 7 spaces. Right 3, down 7, opens up, and we can